Look who found the sound effects button. Hey everyone. In today's video, we're building an adjustable standing desk. And once again, we're partnering with Vetric to share and promote this project. We'll be actively working to get community participation in evolving and improving the design. And we'll show off the results at the 2018 user group meeting. <laughs> Opening the design file, we've organized the parts into separate layers. The two gears are identical, and the rest of the parts, save for the tabletop, are mirrored into left and right sets. I've left these parts nested for a 5 foot by 5 foot sheet of 19 millimeter or 3 quarters inch Baltic birch plywood. Keep that in mind if you use a different material or have a smaller CNC machine. Similarly, be aware that I'm using a quarter inch compression end mill to ensure a perfect finish on both the top and bottom layers of the plywood. This is a great tool to have and is available individually or as part of our CNC starter set. Hashtag product placement. With my parts nested, I'll give the tool pass one last preview before sending the machine code to our 5x10 Pro 6120 CNC router. I'm going to use composite nails to hold the Baltic birch to the spoil board. It and the nailer are safe, convenient, and as usual, like the machines we use for these projects, available for purchase on our website. What's not to love? We're cutting at 350 inches per minute at 16,000 spindle RPM and one third of an inch depth of cut. A bit conservative, but the last thing I want is a chip in the veneer. The key variable when using a compression bit is to set our first pass depth of cut so that the upcut section of the tool is completely buried and the downcut portion of the tool is doing all the surface cutting. This leaves an awesome finish. I'm installing M5 wood inserts I'll use to fasten the linear rails to each fixed leg. I hear you. These linear rails are nothing short of massive overkill for this application. Though to be fair, we normally design CNC machines, and using heavy duty linear rails and building stout mechanicals is a bit second nature to us. See what I did there? The bearing blocks are fastened through the moving legs. These are by far the most expensive part of the standing desk, and if I was making one for personal use, I would look at substituting a heavy duty cabinet drawer slide instead of the block and rails. I'm using adjustable feet since this stand will be used in shops and events with uneven floors. Otherwise, I'd use felt floor protectors and leave the feet off. The design of this table is not very constrained in terms of width. It is in fact a simple matter to change the dimension of this table, fairly dramatically even, to be quite a bit wider, and perhaps used as an office workstation. The moving legs simply slide onto the rail from the top. The legs are kept synchronized by two gears attached to a common shaft. This allows the table to be easily adjusted in height while maintaining level and stability in all positions. The gears need to hold the weight of the moving legs, tabletop, and of course whatever is on the table. For this reason I'm using fairly heavy duty flanges. The tabletop attaches to the moving legs using cleats, which I'm pre-installing on the moving legs. I'll position the tabletop and measure the overhangs and center and align the tabletop marking the position of the cleats on the underside of the table. Then I'll fasten or glue the cleats permanently to the tabletop and install the table using six M8 socket head fasteners. Lastly, I'll assemble the locking mechanism, which as I say it seems an overly generous description. The locking solution on this table is the last thing I completed and the least finished function of the table. I'd really like to improve this and I'm suspecting that our community of makers will help ensure that happens. That's it, the standing desk is ready for whatever we decide to throw at it. So far, we've used this at the Vetric User Group meeting, and at our educational digital fabrication events, in our demo shops, and at our offices, including editing this video. Thanks again to our partners at Vetric, whose intuitive CNC design software enables thousands of our customers put digital fabrication to work for them. If you'd like to make digital fabrication work for you, we'd love to hear from you. Check out our website and use the contact form to discuss your application. Thanks for watching.